So I am going to um, press my live on, on Instagram and then we're going to go. We're good. Press your live. We are live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a um, live, live episode of A Few Short Minutes. And you guys, today I have Nicole Jolie. <laughs> Let me give you a little information about this beautiful woman. Uh, Nicole Jolie is booster of... Uh, uh, founder of Boost My Score, so sorry, and she's dedicated to revolutionizing credit enhancement with her innovative software and personal strategies. Her live webinars combine expert knowledge, practical advice, making financial literacy accessible to all. Driven by a mission to empower 10,000 Americans by the end of 2024, so you guys count, uh, Nicole's work is a blend of technology, education, compassion in the realm of financial health. Nicole, uh, tell people about you that I just didn't say, please. Nicole. Interesting. Nicole. Oh, okay. Just a second. She said, we're going to hang out. Um, all right, friends. So while she's getting ready, um, drop a hello if you're here and you're, you're seeing this. You are muted, my friend. You are muted, my friend. So still muted. <laughs> We're going to get it, you guys, I promise. You're muted, my friend. You're not. That's interesting because it says it's muted and I can't unmute you. Want to go out and come back in? Let's see if that works. Okay. All right, you guys. It's a one-woman show for a minute, but that's uh, that's okay because just very much like life, Things don't always run as smoothly as we expect them to or want them to. And so let's take this moment to talk about expectations um, while Nicole sorts the audio, which is unfortunate. It was working right beforehand. So here we go again. Um, so expectations. Expectations, while we were taught that they were great and that you should have them, um, expectations, a lot of the time, can actually uh, paralyze you because if something doesn't look like it should or turn out like it should, you think it's a failure when in actuality, I don't think it's a failure. And now I can hear Nicole. So, Nicole, introduce yourself. Oh, please. my gosh. Am I we'll working? It out. Yeah. Oh, is the expectations. Thing on? You know, <laughs> I can't even. I, I just can't even. So I, I'm sorry I had to end this live on Instagram and now it's only on Facebook. So I apologize for that. But um, I'm here. And as you can see, so are my dogs. So thank you so much, Stacey Short, for <laughs> handling that like a pro. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry to start our first live out like that. But I have a feeling this is actually going to be a very good conversation just by virtue of the fact that we have so many technical issues. So thank you so much for um, having me on your show and talking about self-love and money. I um, I think that there are a lot of things that we all deal with, with our credit and our money and self-love. And this is going to be such a great conversation about that. So despite all of our technical difficulties that weren't actually that bad, now we can get on to all of the conversation and, and what Stacy has to ask me and how, how self-love and money actually uh, intertwine in many, many ways beyond self-love. So thank you for I, I, having me and thank you for uh, hosting and thank you for sharing this with your amazing people. I look forward to, to hearing the comments or reading Yeah, them. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, so you made that distinction. I hadn't even drawn that line between self money and being intertwined. Um, I definitely want to talk about that. But first, talk about Boost My Score and how it came to be. So this is the labor of my own self love and credit and money that um, I think a lot of us have this underlying 
river kind of inside of us that's like it's a gurgle it's like and we tend sometimes it gets really loud sometimes it gets really minor and it depends on how distracted we are from exactly what we need to be working on and mine was my underlying rumble inside of my body was the rumble of you need to look at your credit score you need to fix this you need to do this you need to do that and and it was more of this this incessant voice behind my head and like in my gut. And although that voice was, um, was right, it was also my ego judging me for, for not taking care of it. And so we have a lot of issues with our ego as well when it comes to that. So my boost, my score was born out of that. It was born out of the rumble and it was made specifically to help me to raise my credit score. As a business owner, I had a really bad credit score. Some business owners really do, and they don't want to talk about it because they're like, oh, look at how much money I'm making. But um, that's not the credit, you know? And so we tend to let things gloss over, uh, not only in our professional life, but in our personal life. And we, we kind of close the door and like hide the rumble. So my rumble became Boost My Score. And Boost My Score is a revolutionary AI driven technology that cleans up your credit score and is patented and proprietary. And the re the way it does it is through using Metro 2 compliance. I'm not going to get into the technical issue here, but what I am going to say is that it has revolutionized so many people's lives, including my own, and it will continue to do so. And I think that Beyond the technical, what we're going to talk about is more of the relationship into that credit and why, uh, why that relationship exists and how we can, you know, curtail the rumble and actually allow the rumble to just kind of dissipate as opposed to creating this grand wave of like anxiety, fear, guilt, shame. Self-loathing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like you turned your pain into purpose, which is like the ideal situation, right? Of coming out of something that was very difficult and then having this beautiful something else that came out of it. Is that accurate? It is. It is um, to. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't, you know, nothing ever. I've stopped looking at it like, oh, at the end point. We're at the end point. It's not at the end point. I stopped looking at that. I've more looked at it like this is the first time that I have I built four companies. This is my fourth one. And this is the first time I built a company based upon something that I actually um, went through in a bad way. Like, you know what I mean? Like my, yeah. my anti-aging skincare line was not in a bad way. It was because I, I needed really good skincare. And so I developed that. Right. And my marketing agency was not because I, you know, was having a hard time marketing it was because I was really loving it and I started doing it. And then that came out. Right. But now, um, and then my first, you know, my very first business was, was helping people to build their websites years and years ago before we had all what we have now. And, allowing them to, you know, learn the, learn what was going to happen with their business, with their business based upon this website, like why they needed it, you know, here's your why. And it was more of a convince and convert. And so th those, you know, when you convince and convert, I leave that to Jay Bear, you know, of his company convince and convert. I don't, I don't really, con you know, concrete, I can't really get into the convincing and converting. And so when this whole thing happened with my credit, you know, years ago, and I never looked at it. And I, I chose to just stick my head in the sand like an ostrich. And then when I finally came up and like took a breath, you know, it was like, oh, you know, this big gas, like, oh my gosh, what did I do? What did I do? Well, um, that's what boosts my score is. And so, yes, it's like the mess in the message, you know, and I didn't mean for it to be like that. That wasn't the, the case, but I think a lot of business owners that come to that conclusion are like, wow, I didn't mean for it to be like that, but all of a sudden it is, you know? And so you're kind of like, wow, that's pretty cool. And so that's what, that's what this is about in, in relation to like how I started, why it's here and, and who I'm helping 
beyond myself. I absolutely love that, um, that you're like, hey, this happened. Uh, awesome. <laughs> I didn't expect this, but here it is. So you didn't set out with an intention of creating this, but um, man, it's amazing that it's here. And uh, those people that know me, they know I'm a huge fan of AI, huge huge fan of AI. In fact, I'm giving a workshop in a couple of weeks to quite a few coaches on how to leverage AI in their business um, because it is a game changer as far as getting some time back in our lives. And um, isn't that something that we all need is time to just be and do what we want. And um, yeah, so I love AI. Uh, Talk about why it's important to love money love your money, not love money as a whole, but your money in particular. Well, you can love money as a whole too. I think that um, there's a lot of superstition around that. One day I was driving and in front of me was a car that was very, very nice car. And it the license plate was I-L-U-V-M-N-Y. And I swear to you, I was like, I just... My eye, it was kind of like one of those, wah, 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 like um, Jessica, Jessica Rabbit, you know, yeah, the eyeball, the eyeball. Mm-hmm. that was me. I was just cracking up in my car. I was laughing. I was taking my dogs for a run and I was just like, so I couldn't believe it. Just so happens that the woman that was driving that car was also going for a run in the same park that I was. And so I couldn't help it, but speak to her. And I said, I love your license plate. I absolutely love your license plate. And it was a perfect car for that perfect license plate. She was the perfect person to have it. You know, I mean, everything about her was, I love money. And she had done a great job at pulling that off. And this is where, you know, I I appreciate that. Like, I look at that and I go, good for you. Good for you that you are able to come to terms with your, your money, yourself, your heart, and where your priorities lie. And just because you love money doesn't mean you don't, that you're evil or that you have some kind of problem that you don't, you absolutely don't. We need money. We need money to, to afford all this. We need it. And so there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And, you know, we could go into the Bible and all those places, but let's just keep it basic to loving yourself enough and respecting yourself enough to show up with the money that you need to invest in your business, to pay your taxes, to operate your business profitably only shows the respect to yourself and then to your clients who you'll inevitably serve. If you have a business that's not running in a profitable manner and you're out there pumping and hustling and you are underlying that rumble in your stomach is underlying saying you need to feel guilty about making money. It's, it's a dichotomy. You're not going to, you're just not going to do it. It's, it's, you're sending mixed signals to the universe and you're not capable of handling the money that the universe is saying, okay, here, here. And I did that for years on and off. I was like, oh yeah, I, you know, the whole outward. And then the inward was, oh my gosh, you know, my heart would just be like pumping, like racing, you know, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And our love for money is not the love for money that we think. It's the love of what the money can do. But credit, credit is an entirely different animal on that. You know, it's like, it's like money is, is the conduit and credit is the leverage. Okay. Talk a little bit more about that. That's the, I haven't heard that before. So would you explain a little bit more for the audience, please? Well, the conduit of money, you know, it's a, it's an exchange, right? Credit is not necessarily an exchange because there's nothing being exchanged other than, a, a, you know, bits and bytes. But with credit, you're able to leverage the conduit of money because when you're able to keep the, the flow of money going through your credit card and you're able to gain points, you're able to gain cash back. I just got over $1,500 cash back Nice from my spend. I get 3% on one credit card, right? I get 1% on the others. Do, do I use the 3% more? Of course. Hello. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. It makes some um, free money. Yes. Right. right? <laughs> so, and it's deposited that day. Like it's not a, a two week wait. It's not like, oh, we got to wait. We got to do all this. Other End of stuff. the year. Boom. Yeah. It's like, hello, instant. Let's go. So, that leverage for me 
allowed me to invest more in my business. So now I have these, these new ads that I'm doing, right? And so like, this is where credit was, was drilled into us in, in the early days of having a credit card where it was only used for emergencies, like only use it for gas or only use it for this, or only use it for that. And then yep. all of a sudden it's like, you know, the only use it for this became the emergency every freaking day. And now and, we're like emergency you know, night out with friends. Yeah, uh, like, definitely did that one it, in my early twenties. Right. Like you're using your credit card as an emergency for everything. And now everything is an emergency. So now it just becomes like drama mama of everything. Right. So if you're serious about credit, this is what I've just learned. Like, mind you, I have been in and out of the finance industry for years since 1985 and I've worked with some of the best companies and some of the worst traders and some of the weirdest people. But what I've learned across the board is the best people who have the best mindset about money are the people who have the most respect for themselves. Hands down. Yeah. So if talk you about that. Ray Dalio. The self-respect. Self-love. Warren, Warren Buffett. You know, these Gary V. What does he talk about, right? So let's like pull it into you. You, you know, I can I can talk about my mentor, Dion Coopwood. Talks about he doesn't talk about money. He talks about respect. He talks about helping the people. He talks about loving on the people. And then I have another mentor, Rodney Peaks, and Rodney talks about the same thing. He's like self love, be a blessing, then you're blessed. You know, people who have money and have leverageable credit are talking about self-love. Yeah, I've never made that distinction until you said that earlier. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, it is. And because it reminded me of something that my therapist said to me two weeks ago, and I think it's applicable here. And what she said was, Stacey, nobody is going to crawl inside your body and love you the way you can love you. Even if there was some a superhero that could come and, and fix all your life, you know, your money problems, relationship problems, family problems, like car problems, whatever problems you're having, uh, they still cannot crawl inside your body and do what you need to do. And so I, I hear that when you're talking about the money, like nobody's coming to take my money and go, let me handle this for you. Thank you. Nobody's well, going to stop me. No, they're not. But here's the thing is that people people want to disassociate. They have this love-hate relationship with credit and money, right? And with credit, with credit, it's like you take the card out of the wallet and it's kind of like you're it's it's not even there. It's kind of like, "Oh, here, just use the plastic." And then the bill comes. And then you start getting that rumble. And then you start getting that like, what's going to happen? What did I do? Right? What did I do? Yeah. And so credit is kind of like this thing that's like innocuous, you know? It like, yeah, it exists when it's in my Until. home, right? Until the bill comes and now it really exists. So one of the things that um, I've really learned about myself and what I'm, what I'm going to be sharing with folks here very soon is a one day credit cleanup boot camp. And I I thought about this when I was on with my mentor and when I was talking to I have I have a couple of mentors because you know if you're in business you have to have a mentor period. I don't yes. care who you are, I don't care what you think you know, you don't know what you don't know. And I yep. can tell you this. I invested $78,000 last year, okay, in mentorship and, and going to events and software and investing in my business. That's a lot of money. That's a, That's a lot, lot of money. money. Okay. Lot of money. And when people look at that, they're like, oh my God, I could never do that. But I look at it and I go, am I going to invest 78 grand to make a million? Hell yeah. Then it's nothing. Yeah. Okay. So- are you going to invest in the credit card to leverage, to learn how to leverage it, spend it, keep your utilization low, leverage that, spend it, manufacture it, keep your utilization low to make $250,000 on a potential loan that you could get at 0% financing or 
well, I wouldn't say that, but maybe, you know, a very low finance rate for a little while, for a little while, maybe six months. Okay. And you can start to build your business. Maybe you have an Airbnb you want to build. You know, you want to start renting out places and build those Airbnbs up so that you can have that residual income at maybe 3000 to 5000 a month. So is that worth taking a loan out for 25, 30 grand and, and, and then making that every single month? I mean, you know what I mean? So the leverage here comes from leveraging the credit in an effort for the business owner. And I'm talking about business owners here. I'm talking about people who are saying, okay, I really want to make a part-time income. I want to make a part-time income, but honestly, I'd like to work part-time and make a full-time income. But let me just think about a part-time income right now, you know, because that's doable for them. They're like, okay, what could I do part-time? I Side got hustle. Them. Right. I, I can deliver food or I can deliver packages for Amazon or whatever. And and therein lies like, oh, I got my side hustle. But their side hustle takes the time because it's a one off. Right. They have to do it themselves. So what can they do that doesn't take that? And credit allows you to leverage that moment in time of saying, I am going to have a side hustle that I only have to work a few hours for. OK, and that's what that's what Boost My Score is all about, really. It's beyond like cleaning up the credit and fixing your finances. It's beyond that. It teaches you more about how to have a part time hourly, like part time side hustle and get paid six figures a year because everyone knows everyone knows at least five people that have bad credit or poor credit or credit that they need this off of, or the credit that they need that off of. So why not use the software to build your business doing that and charge them and be able to run that business and not have that feeling about credit anymore that underlies this tone of like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do to pay my credit cards. Now you have, you know, I, um, I have a, an incredibly powerful like community behind me. And I'm so grateful for that. But what I've learned from this is that, you know, being able to have that knowledge in, okay, how can I leverage this and not being scared and not holding on to the card like, oh, I don't want to do this. And instead allowing that respect, it, it just, it magnifies and people around you magnify. You start to attract, for example, yourself, you start to attract people who attract other people. And all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, where is this coming from? Yeah, look at all these people. Look at all these great people that are around me. I want so, you to talk about how people attach self-esteem and self-worth to their credit score, their bottom line of their bank account, um, because, ooh, I'm getting chills. So, yep, this is important. Um, yeah, full chills. Okay, because I know, um, and this isn't something I talk about often, but I am a single mom, and there are some monetary challenges that come with oh. that. In addition, I my oldest was born without an immune system. So for you know, 15, 16 years, I had to stay underemployed in order to attend to his health needs. And that caused some financial issues too. And yes, I, I'm afraid to look at my bank account, afraid to look at my credit score, because that means I'm terrible. I'm a piece of shit. I have no self-worth. Talk about that. Oh, I love that you asked this. You know, um, I want to really be I, I really, I know this conversation is, is a great conversation, but this is even, this is the tipping point of where it gets exceptional. And this is where we don't talk and we aren't transparent enough with the feelings that we have about tying our self-worth to our bank account and our credit score. And I have done that for years. And I can tell you, um, there are still days. Oh, of course. Like, oh my God, what's going to happen, you know? Um, but I, I, I can't stress enough that when you get into the game of credit, and I call it a game because it is a game. It's a game that the bureaus have put together and the bureaus are not government agencies. Thank you very much. They are private agencies, okay? They make a lot of money off of you, a lot of money off of you because one in three Americans have bad credit. And when when they see that, that predatory, 
It's, it's like an apex predator. They're going to come swooping right in. They're coming swooping right in. They're saying, hey, hey, we can help you. And then all of a sudden, you've got all of these predatory lenders coming at you with 18% to 29 to 49%. Hey, I can help you get out of that debt. And then before you know it, you're paying more fees on the, that payment than you are in the actual principal balance. And this is where you talk about, you say... I feel like, you know, I feel like shit. I feel terrible. Oh, you know, I don't want to look at this. And this kind of like rumble and you'd rather just go for a walk or, you know, do the laundry, you know? Um, yeah, for sure. This, this caused, this is caused by people who, you know, when you, and I wouldn't say people, but I say all of us who have decided that our self-worth is tied to a numerical value. And, when we can, uh, and this is not easy, when we can disassociate ourselves and say, you know, okay, I've got, I've got bad credit. Let me take a look at this through somebody else's eyes. And now you get into a community like the Boost My Score community, like we have with our Metro 2 community, and you find that there are thousands of people that feel the same way as you do. And all of a sudden, that fear, that guilt, that shame, that that embodiment of like that rumble, all of a sudden it just kind of relaxes. And I, I encourage people to find that tribe because when they find that tribe and they're able to just say, this is how it is. What can I do? What can I do to help myself now? Instead of, well, you screwed up and you, you know, hearing their parents or hearing their friends or hearing their family, instead of that coming into a community that's supportive enough to say, okay, here's where you start. This is here. That's the past. And that happened three minutes ago. That problem with our microphones is not happening right now. So let's no. move on from here. Right. So it it's really disassociating yourself with that last thought, right? And that's not simple to do. That takes meditation. It takes time to, you know, get inside. And like you say, you can't give this to somebody. You have to do it yourself. And that's why Boost My Score is so successful because we don't do it for you. We don't do it for you. We, we do it with you, but you are responsible. And when, when you really take on that responsibility and you say, okay, I'm just going to take this on. I'm just going to, I'm going to move with it. It's got to work. All of a sudden your perspective changes and start, you start to see things happen. I will tell you a great story about my credit. I started at a 590, very low, embarrassingly low. And Within 12 days, my score went up 78 points on TransUnion, and it went up like 34 points on Equifax. Now, since then, I've had it dip and go up and go down and dip and go up and go down. This is exactly what happens. You always have to keep an eye on your credit. It's just, it is a normal thing. It's like your bank account. And it becomes very normal. And for me, it became very normal because I started looking at my credit report score almost on a daily basis and digging it. I was like, Ooh, okay, where's it going? Where's it going? And I had been sending letters to the government for six years about my student loans. No joke. And oh, yes. never getting anywhere with it, never getting anywhere with it. Well, one day, and I probably could share my screen if I could find it. Um, you could actually see it on my, on, on my social media too. One day I get this letter and it's actually an email, not a letter. <laughs> and it says, um, your student loans, um, you need to check your student loans today immediately, ASAP, right? And so, of course, this like knot in my throat goes up and I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And I checked the student loans and lo and behold, $150,000 worth of student loans are forgiven and removed from my credit report. And so... I talked to my mentor and he just, he just looks at me and he was like, okay, so now you're $150,000 richer this year. So you did make six figures. Okay. Let's move on. And so like, it wasn't I love a big that reframe, you know, and it was a reframe. It was like, yeah, you're right. Let's just move on. Okay. But you see where that, that goes. When you start to get things off of your credit report, a bad credit report costs you a fortune. It costs you a fortune, you know, in missed opportunities in high interest rates, in high fees, in low, low 
very low limits that, you know, don't even get reported and crappy cards, right? So like, that's what it's costing you. And when you think about, like, when you said that you got chills, like, I don't want to look at it. And all of a sudden you see a little bit, like a little inkling of, ah, oh, there's hope. It went up. You're like, cool. Okay. I can look at this. I can look at this. I can do this. And before you know it, the money that you're spending on the software is tertiary and the fiduciary responsibility for you is now like, I'm cleaning up my credit. And then all of a sudden people start coming to you. You know, I, I was at a mentorship event not too long ago out of the country. And I, I met these two people just sitting at the table while I was eating lunch. And it was kind of like this, on this ocean thing. And we were eating lunch at this cool little, little snack place. And it sounds lunch, terrible. It, yeah. Right. Um, and we all start talking and I give my number to these people and I start talking this morning. Low, no joke. This morning I'm on my bike and getting my, you know, finished with my workout and I get a call from one of those people, you know, and she's like, who is this? I was trying to figure out who's in my phone. And so I start telling her and she's like, oh my God, I meant to call you. And I'm so glad I got, you know, like this is what happens when you just forget about the numerical value and your association with it, because nobody else is judging you. I'm not sitting here going, Oh, you have a, you have a low credit score. Oh, I think, I think we can end this now. Right? Like what? No, you're a single mom. You have, you know, you had, you had problems. No, of course not. That even draws me closer to you. So I think that people's ashamed and feeling like this is why I boost my score because I, I was totally ashamed. I was just annihilated. And, and some people get that, that to that level of desperation and that level of um, shame that they actually, you know, unalive themselves due to their financial missteps. And I think like that isn't talked about enough in this realm of how serious people do connect their identity and their self-worth to their money. And I see it all the time with coaches because they're afraid to ask for the money. They, they start stumbling. When you start talking about $5,000 for a 12-week program one-on-one -on -one, where I help you eliminate your negative self-talk, um, that sounds like a deal to me. But when it's you saying it to somebody else and asking for that $5,000, suddenly people stumble over it. They reduce their price on the fly. They meant to say $5,000. They say $2,000 instead. It is, it is wild to see the self-worth that is attached to what they charge as a coach. Um, do you see that in other aspects of your, of your business as well? I think that, you know, when it comes to the ask for money, um, I have been, I have really worked on that. This last year has been um, a labor of love, <laughs> if you will, working with myself on that. And I've got to say that, um, you know, it, it it comes from a multitude of things. I look at that as, are you really, are you invested in your offer? Because I was on a call last night um, and I was like, I'm struggling with this offer in a way that I've not, I, I'm not able to really say it right. You know, and I was talking about an offer with my mentor and he said something to me that it, it just, it just like so resonated. And it was like, Hey, I'm giving you permission to just sit back and really work on this, not rush it, not get something out because everybody on Instagram has something out, but just step back for the next 48 hours and work on this. Cause I know what you can put out. And I, I know how good you are at putting these things out. So I'm going to give you that 48 hours and I'm just going to say, just, you know, take that 48 hours. And it was like, he gave me permission that I already had, but it was just hearing it, right? And I think that people need that permission to focus and invest in themselves. Again, right back to the more you invest in you, the more you're going to see that, reap that reward. And it takes a lot, you know, 
people will spend more money on an iPhone than they will on investing in themselves. They'll go out and spend $2,000 on an iPhone 15. But when it comes to $2,000 that they can spend on their self negative talk, they will repel. And here's the reason why they have validity in the phone that's going to allow them to find a tribe that's going to talk negative to and, and commiserate with their negativity. And so when they can spend $2,000 on a commiseration, as opposed to $2,000 on working on getting out of that comfort zone and putting them into a different comfort zone that would be uncomfortable for a moment, they would, they will choose the comfort zone. We will choose the comfort over every time, every time. Okay. And so, um, again, going back to the ask that is a buy-in into your own offer. And, and I said to myself, well, am I capable? You know, it's not that I'm not capable. It's just that do I want, what, what do I want this offer to do inevitably? What do I really want to do? I want to, I, you know, my intention is to get a thousand people into the boost my score software for a minimum of six months so they can see the results. They can see the results and they can walk away in six months and go, you know what? I'm going to keep using that software and I'm going to show other people how to use that software so I can bring them into the software as well. And I can actually help them with their credit. And so I'm going to make an extra 10,000 bucks this month just on helping people with their credit. And I'm going to, I'm going to share the community with them because the community is a community that shares how to manage the mindset with that credit and how cool would that be for these people to experience what I just experienced. Because when we get off of a ride, when we get off of a of jumping out of an airplane, when we get off of, you know, going to the mountains and and rafting down the Colorado, we're like, oh, you got to go do it. It's so great. OK, the experience for us is amazing. And so when I say to you, I spent six years writing letters to the United States government about my about my student loans. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, I forget about them. And I'm just like, okay, they're due. I'm just going to have to deal with it. And that's, you know, I have a huge two degrees and like, uh, you know, uh, right. All right. Yeah. Just get up and deal with it. Just get it over with all of a sudden, boom, removed, forgiven. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And it's, it's that disconnect of not being connected. So for, for like manifestation people, right. They say, um, put it out there. And, and feel the feeling like it just happened and then let go. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's like. You like wrote the letters, wrote the letters, wrote the letters, wrote the letters. And then, and then you were let go. You were like, okay, it's due. I'm going to figure this out. And then boom, boom. So and that's it's the, the letting same go thing too. with, with banking, with credit. You know, if you're able, like I said, you know, taking your head out of the sound and saying, okay, I'm just going to deal with this. And, and, work it with my, with my group over here. And they're going to help me to work through this. And when you do that and you, you allow someone else to help you, it's the self-love that you're allowing them to help you. Because a lot of us are like, oh, don't get near me. Don't help me. I don't need your help. Who are you to tell me? Right. Mm -hmm. And this, this feeling of like total defensiveness about our money and our credit. And when you just say, okay, you know, I do need some help. I'm not a bad person. This is what this is what's going on. All of a sudden you start attracting people who are right there ready to say, okay, here, this is where you start. This is what you do. This is how much it's going to cost you. This is what you have to do every month. If you want a VA to do it for you, this is how much that's going to cost you. Done. Yeah, I love that because what I know about community um, is that it normalizes and validates at the same time, right? And and let me just draw a picture for you guys. So if you had, so I have fibromyalgia and my son has common variable immunodeficiency. So when I got those diagnoses, what do you think I did in this day and age of social media? I went and I found people that have have fibromyalgia or have children with CVID and started asking questions. It's the same thing. It's just, again, because of that taboo self-worth, I'm a bad person, that we get stuck there. And why wouldn't you go out and seek a community that's going to support you to better yourself, whether, again, it's in your health or your wealth 
or your relationships, right? You get a therapist if you're marriage counseling or for yourself. Uh, it's the same thing. And yet, and yet it's still a dirty little secret. It's still a dirty little secret. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I, I live in Vegas. And so the reason why I brought up the, 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 um, unaliving is because that happens here quite a bit. Somebody will come lose their shirt at the table and not want to go home because they are so, so deeply ashamed of what they did that they jump off parking garages and then that's it. And I just, I just think that's so preventable, so preventable. Yeah. Yeah. The tie to our money is, is huge and that's not going to stop, but what could, you know, the allay of the fear and the allay of the guilt and the shame happens when you are capable of relenting to the, what, what it feels like. And if you can say it feels badly, then you can, you kind of move into overcoming it. I think with, with credit specifically and self-love and getting over the hump of having bad credit, what I have seen in in the short period that I have been doing this. And it's not like I know this, you know, back and forth, up and down. There's always something that I don't know. And there's always something that I I see and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. What I have seen is that the the mixed signals that we get and that we're um we put we're privy to on a daily basis through our social media feeds only exacerbates our guilt. And so what I have done is in my group, it's not on social media. It's actually on a, on a separate host. And I, I don't work in that space. I, I really look to say, okay, listen, here's where you're at and here's what you can do. And giving that opportunity to just get that information and take advantage of it without having to feel like they have to ask for, hey, you guys, what do you think of this? And, and this whole thing of asking everybody else what they think of, granted, it could be a good thing, you know, and it could or be it could not. a good thing, right? Um, <laughs> when it then comes you get to- the comparison and competitive, right. like, oh, she's so farther ahead and I'm never going to get there. And so why bother, right? right. It's, the, it's the defeatism that happens. Exactly. And I think and a lot of times, not really think, but what my my head space says, all right, if this is about credit, you know, what do you think I should do with my credit if it's low or this or that? And people come at you, you know, and all of a sudden they're annihilated. And my thought about this is, is more of do, what is it that your ultimate goal is with the credit? Is it to buy a house? Is it to buy a car? Is it to invest in a business? Is it to pay for your children's future? Is it to pay off your health care? What is the intention? And get really, really real with that. And then when you do, you're able to say, these are the cards that are going to help me to get there. Because not every credit card is meant for that. So not every credit card is going to build your credit to help you buy a house or buy a car. Not every credit card is going to help you to have a better um, credit score for to get a really good card like an Amex Black or or a Chase um, Chase Inc. or whatever. You know, it's not going to help you to get those really good credit cards. So what is the goal? And this is something that I speak about inside the group: is that what is the goal that you've come in with? Is it just to clean up your credit because That we can do right now. But now after you start cleaning up your credit, what are you going to do? Are you going to be applying for credit while you clean it up? Because that's going to, that's going to mess with your score. Are you going to buy a house in four months? And you know, what do you, what do you want to do? And so I think a lot of this, this self-love and money and credit comes from the fact that people aren't, aren't honest enough with what they want to do with their money because they honestly don't know. And they're getting so many sound bites. And uh, my, my mentor said to me, you know, last night, he's like, look, just take that 48 hours and don't have the sound bites. You know what I mean? Like just allow yourself to work on your offer. And that's the same thing is just allow yourself to work on the offer of what are, what are you going to offer yourself in a year? You know, we just flipped the year 
Now, what are you going to offer yourself at the end of the year? How are you going to show up at the end of the year? Is it still going to be with a, with a 590? Maybe it's a 610, but you know, you've only gone up 20 points. What if you could have gone up 120 points to a 730, right? So like, what do you want to offer yourself? And that's, that's where I think that the self-love and creating a space for yourself to just sit down and say, where do I want my credit to be? And make that your focus. And then allow yourself to move forward there. Yeah, I absolutely love that. Um, what comes to mind for me about self-love and money is, again, the respect, right? Um, how much do you respect yourself? How much do yeah. you respect yourself? Do you respect yourself to put in the work, to get really fucking honest about what it is that got you there and what is, isn't working and what is working or what you think it might be working. Um, and that goes across the board, whether it's money or relationships or, you know, any of it, but like get really fucking honest about yeah, how did I get here? And yeah. do I want to stay here? Because right. if the answer is yes, okay. Okay. But that's it friends. That's, that's all that's, that's, that's the box. That's the box you put yourself in and you just put a lid on it. So, and it's okay. That's absolutely fine. But if you don't want to be in the box and you want to leave that lid open, you got to move. And and yeah. so what are your thoughts on that? And what are some steps that people can take to start that movement forward? Because we're not so, taught this. Nobody yeah, teaches yeah. this in high school. Like we have no clue, right? Nobody teaches this. Um, and yeah. so we're out here just winging it. And a lot of people are just winging it and they're listening to a lot of a lot of high level conversations that aren't really um, meant for them. You know, oh, well, Bitcoin is doing this and this ETF is doing this, whereas they've only you know, they can barely pay their, pay their rent. And so this is where um, I look at it in a three step, very simple three steps. OK, number one is if they're really serious about cleaning up the credit, they're going to come to boost my score. They're going to get that subscription and they're going to learn how to use the software. And this takes all of an hour, you know, out of your day, an hour to change your life. Um, and if you don't have that hour, then there's absolutely nothing I can do to help you with that. Um, I don't have an answer. That's your box. Yeah. That's your so, box. Yeah. There's, you know, you can't get anywhere without doing it yourself with boost my score. There's absolutely no way to, um, and you can hire people to, to do it for you. I'm not saying that you can't, I'm just saying that that's not the way that I am going to go about this with the thousand people that are going to come into my boost my score software. They're not looking for someone else to blame for what they can't take responsibility for. I'm looking for the responsible person says, okay, I'm done. I haven't gotten the results that I have wanted with people who are saying that they can get me results and they can't. I'm done with that. I am going to use Boost My Score software. I am going to learn how to use the back office. I am going to learn how to take care of the things that I need to take care of for my family, for my friends, for the people who rely on me, who depend on me. That's what I'm going to do. And those are the people who I'm talking to right now. Um, and my mentor is actually on my <laughs> on my feet. Thank you. Um, but I, I've got to say that, you know, I learned so much from people who, myself included, who, who come to me with bad credit. Like this morning, this woman says, to, you know, she's just like, I've got this, this, and this, and this is what happened. And they get caught up in the story. The, the story. story the story doesn't matter. Here's what matters. Are you going to take responsibility for what you have right now? And if you are, I'm your woman. I can help you. I'm that credit lady. I am that credit lady. You know why? Because I have been there through, I have done this craziness with the story. I have done it and it's got me nowhere. Now I end up investing in myself and in a mentor that I couldn't afford. I had to figure it out. And it was the best investment that I've ever made. My mentor is the best investment I've ever made. Um, hands down. And, and here's the reason why. Because when you start to pull yourself into a space 
that you can have a, a someone who's going to say, okay, I'm ready to work with you, get rid of your story and let's work. And that's where boost my score comes in. We don't worry about that. It's one click of a button for God's sakes that you have to do to generate letters that are written specifically for your, your exact predicament with your exact score amongst the three, actually four primary bureaus. It writes them for you. It's not a generic letter. It writes them for you. This is about you. It's not about everybody else. You are in a community with everybody else, but all the letters, all of the, all of the information is yours and it's about you. So when you decide that you're going to sign up for the subscription every single month, you're able to write letter, have letters written by the AI for you. And here's the beauty of this, because I didn't get into this, but let me just technically go into why factual disputing and Metro 2 are completely different. There is a machine, it's called eOscar, and it reads the letters, okay? It's not like we send a letter and somebody's sitting behind the desk with a Starbucks and saying, I can't wait to read your letter today, baby. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Thousands of letters. No, absolutely no. Absolutely way. not. Right? That sounds, so they, that they sounds absolutely open. abhorrent. Right. They slice <laughs> it open, they feed it through this machine. eOscar is the machine that makes, that, that actually makes the decision. Okay. And if your letter is not written in the language that the eOscar machine is reading, your letter goes basically in the round file. Now, I can't say to you for sure that everything is going to be taken off your credit report. I can't say that at all. I don't even know what's on your credit report. I have no idea. But what I'm saying is that at the click of a button, your letters are written in the exact language that eOscar is, is reading, not our language, eOscar's language. Okay. Get rid of the fact that, oh, somebody has to read this. Uh Uh-uh. This is a machine. And so when you are able to feed that into a machine that has, that has thousands of letters going through it. And all of a sudden the machine's like, oh, ding, ding, ding. This makes sense to me. You know, all these other ones didn't make sense. Now this one makes sense. That's the difference. And there's much more to it, but I'm going to keep it really simple right now. Okay. Cause I don't want to get all technical and, and like sound like a total drone, but <laughs> that is the beauty of boost my score is it's made for you. It's not made for anyone else. It's made for you. And when you put your information in, when you put, bring up your credit report, when you pull the credit report that we have you pull, which is their comprehensive credit report that has everything on it, not just what the bureaus want you to know. Okay. Mm, talk about that for a second. Cause I don't think enough people understand. I didn't know that. So oh, explain yeah. that for a moment, please. Oh yeah. I, I got to say to you that like, this is something that we all didn't know. Okay. We're all thinking that we're getting this great, this amazing package of like all these papers and it's like all on us. And, oh, this is cool. The bureaus only give you what they have on you and what they want you to know. Okay. They don't say, oh, let me help you out. You know, come on, I'm making a hundred thousand bucks off of you every year. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to give you up. I'm going to give you up. They're not yeah. going to give up the fact that they can make so much money off of you. Uh uh-uh. uh. You got to fight for that, baby. You got to fight for it. And I'm sorry that this is another fight, but yeah, it is. And it's the fight for your life. It's the fight for your financial future. It's the fight for your kids. It's the fight for your health. It's the fight for your bank account. It's the fight for your house, for your car, for your dreams. And if you aren't willing to fight for that, then there's nothing that can help you. So the the bureaus tell you what they want you to know. When we pull our credit report, it's comprehensive. It's not biased. We pull it from the primaries. TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, and Innovis. Innovis is a primary, but it actually operates as a secondary. And then we pull from the secondaries, which are hundreds. There's hundreds of secondaries. And then there's data furnishers, such as the loans that you get, Visa, MasterCard, whoever. Okay. So with the with the onset of the merging of the banking community, okay, now we have more mega, mega banks than we had smaller banks. Okay. Now we're looking at credit unions as our banks, as opposed to these like Washington mutuals, or maybe we had, um, you know, some other city bank or, or, you know, some other bank, right. That had smaller banks outside of it that, that didn't, weren't a part of it. Now, when Chase bought Washington mutual, if you had something bad with Washington mutual, you have something bad with Chase, but they're not going to report it because Chase says, uh, uh-uh, uh, we're just not going to let them in. 
done. They're done. Okay. So you got to be super careful with the way you're going about this now. And if you are not willing to learn more about your credit score, that is actually dictating your car payments, your car insurance, your health insurance, your, how much it costs you to get a house. I mean, it dictates everything. Everything is dictated by the score. Okay. But that doesn't mean it's you, but the self-love you feel has to say, okay, you know what? If that's going to dictate me, I'm going to make that sucker so high. You can't even, are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm touching gonna, me. Yeah. I'm going to make my profile so good. Mm, I don't have to worry about it. Right. So that's what boost my score starts to do for you. It brings you into this ecosystem of saying, all right, let's take it gently. Let's give you some, some really good results. Okay, let's do that for you so that your so that your mindset can change. And then it gives you these good results. And then it says, all right, now we're going to take you and we're going to allow you to understand where you're at within the ecosystem of credit. Where do you fall? How are you being rebucketed? How are you showing up in comparison? Because you are compared. Your score is compared to everybody else inside of that bucket. How are you compared? What can you do that's better? What can you do that's that 3% better? Even 3% is going to make a huge difference for you, okay? So this is where Boost My Score makes everything about credit easy. <laughs> I mean, it is an easy button. It's a click and it's a, it literally is a red button. It says generate letters. How much more simple can I make it? Like, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I can make it any simpler than that. You got to just no. press the button. It's so simple. And when you can see that the letters are written for you on your behalf, with your information, for you, to the bureaus, about you, about the actual dispute that you have, you realize that, okay, I don't have to get too technical with this. I can still learn just about what I need to do with my credit because the technicalities can go, I can go deep. I can go deep into getting all buzzy on that stuff. But that's not what this is about. This is about you changing your life. And if you want to change your life with your credit score, then boost my score is the way to do it. That's the only way I've had any, and I've been in this, this I'm 56 years old. I have a lot of years of credit on me. Okay. And my social security number has been run thousands of times. All right. And you got to think, when you have a lot of credit years behind you and you've got a lot of things that you went through and you can't get them off and all of a sudden they come off and you're like, what? I couldn't get that off. I can show you, I can show you testimony after testimony of people, bankruptcies, child support, repossessions, charge offs, um, delinquents, lates, loans, mortgages, repossess, you know, all kinds of stuff. That and I just want to clarify, you're talking about like legitimate charge-offs, legitimate repossessions, and they have been removed. Yeah. It's removed. not, it's not, um, there aren't mistakes. She's not talking about mistakes, you guys. No. She's talking about shit that happened, life happened. Okay. Yep. Here we are. Now it's digging to your credit. Now it's following you for yep. at least seven to 10 years, at least, at least, Right. And so if you want to take this moment in time, this six months that shit hit the fan and <laughs> now life, life is terrible. Life and is life and you del life is li the life be life and life that. So y'all life is it, life and <laughs> life be life and uh, yeah. So if you want to let that six months follow you for seven to 10 years or beyond, and you want to relive that six months, every time you look at your credit report, you can do that. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah, that you can do or, that. But and and then we come back to what your podcast is all about, and that is the self love. And listen, there is nothing that can give me more gratification right now at this interview than talking to you about this and saying to you that you know you can see you you understand where this is going. You understand where people are going with this and you understand where you can go with this and where you have gone with this. Like, oh my gosh, okay. I have, I have this amount and I'm feeling the chills and I just don't feel good about this. And now you're feeling like a lot better. You can see, you can feel that within this conversation, like, you know, moving you through this, this going from the dismal into the light. And sure. 
this is the feeling that people get when they use the software. This is the feeling that people get when they come into the community. This is a feeling that they get when they get on the calls. We have three calls a week live. They don't, we don't charge for those. They're live and they're Q and A calls. These are the calls that like, they make such a big difference in people's lives because hundreds of people get on these calls and they're, and everybody's like, you feel the energy. You know, because people, all of them have the same issue. And one person's asked the question and then everybody gets the answer. And it's validation. And this is where when you see what Boost My Score can do, you start to see, oh my God, I could use this to help my mom, my dad, my aunt, my uncle, my cousin, my friend, my sister, my brother, whoever. And you can start to take on those people and help them. And all of a sudden, now you've changed somebody's life for the better forever. <laughs> it's not like it's not like a McDonald's hamburger, you know. This is the better forever situation. And so, this is why self love is so important, and respect is so important for yourself and your money and your credit because that comes first. And it's not about not investing. Oh, I'm not going to invest because I have respect for my money. No, no, no. Money needs to flow. In order for you to make any money, you need to flow it period. Credit as well. You got to flow it. It, you know, it's in the Bible, yeah. but read it, look it up. I am going to tell you that there are people who say, okay, I'm going to have some self-love. I'm not going to buy anything. Yeah. You should probably stop buying crap that you don't need, but yeah. that doesn't mean you don't invest in yourself. That's not crap. You don't need, you need to invest right. in yourself. And that comes back to, again, you know, where I started with boost by score and how this came about. It came about with me saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of having this low credit score, of being rejected every freaking time I apply for anything, of being told how much of a lousy person I am basically in these, in these denial letters and how everything is wrong with me and you need to clean it up. And instead, I'm going to take this and I'm going to use this software and I am going to change my life. And I can tell you this, just from the people that I'm around, my mentorship especially, the community of, of amazing people, just amazing people who have gone through hell and their stories are incredible. They're so inspiring that, you know, happy tears come to your eyes when you're reading these posts. It's insane. It's insane. It's like, you just want to, like, you're just reading these posts going, oh my God, this is crazy. I could tell you story after story, but the point is, is that you want to be one of the stories. And so- Allow yourself to be one of the stories and allow yourself to invest in yourself, have some self-love, have some self-respect and go and do something that's really uncomfortable to get somewhere that you'd only think about in your dreams. That, my friends, is the work. The work is the work. It's not writing the letters. It's not gaining understanding of how our financial system works. Um, that's great, but that's not the work. The work is getting really fucking honest, radically honest about what you're doing in your life to create the same situation over and over again. And it goes back to that comfort level. My friends, just because I say comfort doesn't mean you're comfortable. Do not confuse the two. Do not confuse the two. Um, just because you know it and it's familiar. And so your nervous system and your body goes, oh, I know how to do this. We're good. I know how to be in poverty. I know how to have a 590 credit score. I know how to get declined. I know how to, you know, borrow from Peter to rate, uh, to pay Paul and then have nothing at the end of the month. You know how to do that. Yeah. You know how to do Let that. Let me show you this. It's on my wall. I'm going to take it down right now. Yes. Because I keep things up on my wall. I'm going to show you this because this is my student loans being forgiven. So um, I can frame that shit you. too. Yeah, I'm just going to show you this real in IRL so that you can see it. Oh my gosh. There you go, friends. Look at that. $150,000. Yep. Okay. Woo. So I just want you to see that. And, and I and I wrote yay at the bottom. You can see it. Uh, like, uh, yay, yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> um, because it's like, whoa, <laughs> you know? So it's it was always a dream for me to get those removed, you know? and And I didn't give up. I didn't give up on the dream and the dream took six years. The dream of me having this business right now has taken 16. There you go. I've been online since 2008 and I have done 
I've never collected a paycheck for since 2008, have not collected a paycheck, have no paycheck. Okay. I <laughs> literally do this on my own. And had there been scary times? Oh, hell yeah. Has there been times when I've wanted to give up? No. There have been times when I've wanted to give in, but not give up. And this is where I say to you that you just went through a year. You went through 2020 and you said 2021 is going to be better. You went through 2021 and said 2022 is going to be better. You went through 2022 and said 2023 is going to be really great. Where are you right again? Now? Okay. And this happens every freaking year. We're at these conversations every year. every year. And these conversations are beginning to get really boring and old. And so, you know, I think it's more of what did you do in July? to get you ready for the beginning of the year? What did you do in March to get you ready for July to get you ready for the beginning of the year? What did you do in January to get you ready for March so that you could get ready for July to get ready for the beginning of the year? And that's really where this entire conversation says, what is my self-respect and what is my self-love? And how much do I measure that? How can you measure that between one and 10? How do you measure your self-love between one and 10? Mine was at a zero. If I could measure it at a negative, I would have. Okay. Oh yeah. But, at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can tell you right now that this is not something, you know, um, this is not something I take lightly. You know, I, I, I was really down. I was really defeated. and. It's not like I don't have those days anymore where I don't feel defeated or I don't feel down. I have them, but they're nowhere near on the scale of, of the roller coaster that I was on. And so that is a direct correlation. I will tell you, that's a direct correlation of my credit score. No joke, because I am able to see things happen with my, with my credit and with my company. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing it. And it's like the best feeling ever when you have a financial advisor, when you have a, a tax advisor, a tax advisor, and then you have a tax strategist, and then you have a bookkeeping strategist, a strategist, not just somebody who's putting in numbers, but strategizing with you. And then you have a community of strategists. Now you have, now what you have is beyond just a credit software. You have a backing that will help you to not only get funded, to not only raise your score, but to understand what the five factors of that score is and how to leverage those five factors so that now you are at number one in your business. And now you can do a thumbs up for real. I absolutely, absolutely love that. And thank you so much for drawing the parallels uh, between self-love and self-respect. That is not a connection I had made before. I, I felt the felt the feelings for sure. I've drawn it for myself, but I never drew it um, for anybody else because we always think we're the only ones. We always think we're the only ones and yet we're not. And you guys, I just want you to understand, um, she has thrown a lot of information about uh, at us today and it, 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 is, it feels a little overwhelming. However, However, that's what you have her community for, is to go in and go, okay, help me digest what you just told Stacy and what I just watched. And you can go in that community and digest it and learn more and learn differently. That's another thing that we need to do is create different habits. Otherwise, this will all be for naught because you will end up in the same place in a year. If you do not create new habits around your spending, around how you treat credit, around how you treat yourself, around how you treat yourself. And so the work is, my friends, how much do you want to love yourself? And how are you going to show that? And one of the ways is yeah. to fix your credit yeah. and go work with Nicole. I love that. I love that. I think that that is such a great um, end to our conversation because, yeah, the work is to love yourself. It truly is. I, um, I never believed that. <laughs> and I can tell you, it took me many years to learn this. And, you know, one of, I don't think it's a, well, I, I guess it is a regret. My biggest regret, I think right now, as I look forward into my life and look for what I've actually accomplished is that I didn't figure that out sooner. And I, I was just going to say that I had figured that out sooner. 
the years that I spent spinning my wheels um, and fretting and anxiety and having stacks of bills that I didn't open and, uh, you know, uh, swipe and pray. That's kind of, you know, swipe and pray, swipe and pray. And, um, you know, getting uh, change out of the couch. Like I've done it all. I've done it all. And uh, my biggest regret is spending so many years in, in energy and bandwidth and, and soul. I mean, it's soul crushing. Um, how many years I spent in that anxious loop, uh, not understanding that there was a way out that was viable. And um, yeah, that was probably it. I just didn't know where to go. Yeah. No, clue. I get you. I, I so no get clue. you, sister. I think you're, uh, you know, um, I love this conversation. I think it was really, really powerful. I know it started out with some technical glitches, but I think that was just our, our roadmap into a great conversation about this. And I, I love what you're doing with your community. I think that, you know, as, as we bring in a new venture of AI into all of this, we all have to consider, you know, is it talking to my heart because AI doesn't have a heart. And so the only, you know, we are we are very fortunate to have one and when we are able to expand it and and really reach in and look at how we treat ourselves it's a re true reflection of how we treat ourselves is how we treat our others and so our others meaning our other people around us and so that are important to us yeah i say that with all due respect to everybody because I treated people really badly for a long time, you know, and I made that distinction um, <laughs> when I started fixing my credit. Honestly, when I started taking responsibility for not only my credit, but all my banking, but my business in a way that really made sense to me, that I could feel like, okay, I was doing something good um, for myself then things started to change and things are still changing. And I'm just, I'm just really grateful and blessed. Yeah. I am so super excited for you, friend. And what you said is very true. It's the foundation of coaching. How you do one thing is how you do all. So by fixing your credit, your overall life improved because there were habit changes that happened that maybe you're cognizant of or you're not, but you applied across the board in other areas of your life that also needed attention. Yeah. And that is the foundation of coaching, you guys. That's why you hire a coach, period. Whether it's a, a, a credit, you know, court coach, if that's how you identify, or a self-love coach, or a business coach, or a health coach, it doesn't matter. You are looking to change your habits and how you do one thing is how you do all. And if you get it in one area, it's going to affect the other areas, negative nor positive however you want to go, wherever sure. you want to go with that, friends. Nicole, thank you so much for joining me. Tell everybody where they can find you, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. So on on, um, on Facebook, my page is uh, Be Socially Smashing. So my company's name is BBE B -E, Socially Smashing. And that's, um, that's because I love it so you are much. socially smashing. And so that is where you can find me on Instagram and on Facebook and on Facebook for my private page, it's private page. It's Nicole Jolie private. And so you can go there. A lot of things that I post on my private page are public. So that's totally fine. Um, in addition, you can find me on TikTok at Be Socially Smashing. And where else can you find me? My, my, if you want the software, the software is, is, um, dynamic. So if you want the software, you go to, um, M2, like Mary to boost my score.ai and you can sign up for the software there. You can register for free. Um, I do have videos about it. I have lives about it on possibly a daily basis. Uh, I will have a live later tonight as on it. So you can always just tune in, follow me. And if you have questions, get on the live. Otherwise, I just want to say thank you to Stacy and thank you to her community and I really appreciate this opportunity very much. In addition, I really appreciate talking about the self-love and money because I think that is something that we don't talk about at all. And I would love to, you know, be able to expand upon that even more because I think it's it's so dynamic and there's a lot to unpack. So thank you so much for allowing us this venue to do that. 
It's my absolute honor. And friends, um, I know it's, it's early in the afternoon on a Friday where mm -hmm. I live. So I know a lot of you are at work, but if you watch the replay in this and you have questions for Nicole, drop them in the comments because I'm going to tag her and then we're going to stay in contact and I, and I will um, co correlate, not correlate, collate all of the questions, not correlate. What was I thinking? <laughs> and um, Nicole and I will come and do this again on an expanded level because I really have enjoyed having yeah. you here. I think you're dynamic. I thank think you. you are smashing and <laughs> um, thank you for coming and explaining this in a way that actually lands with people. I think when we get these Dave Ramseys and the, you know, and the Susie Ormans and the, um, what was the, yeah, you, you just kind of go, Corcoran. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, Barbara Corcoran, you just yeah. kind of go, mm, I don't, I don't, I don't, envelope system, uh, don't buy a house unless you can have a 15 year mortgage, not a third, all confusing, all yeah. confusing. Uh, yeah, they, that was the latest yeah. Dave Ramsey thing. to a different audience that, you know, I, I appreciate that audience. It's great. But when you really start to think about it, um, you know, I'd like to, they have a large audience, but I'd like to see actually beyond how much they paid off, you know, that's great. I think definitely getting that utilization down is amazing, but really where it starts is you know, did, you know, he's going through a divorce. So let's just think about that. Where's the self-love? Where's the self-respect? What has this done for your inner body as opposed to, you know, in, in addition to your outer body? And that is so important when we consider what we're doing in business and, and in our personal lives. So definitely reach out and everything should go underneath this Every comment that you have should definitely go underneath this live if you have it, because it will help us out to to feel those questions and potentially do this again um, at a you know sooner rather than later. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me for yet another fantastic um, session of a great a few short minutes of the pod. Do all of the social media things, y'all know it is twenty twenty four. I shouldn't have to tell you this. Uh, like, subscribe, follow, interact, do the things, share, share save. if you feel so inclined. Save all the things, comment um, because this is what helps me bring bigger and better guests that can explain things to you like this. And at this level that absolutely just lands and makes sense because we are every man. We are not Barbara Corcoran's audience, Dave Ramsey's audience. Like you said, they just talk to a different group and it's not us. That, that conversation is not for you. <laughs> this conversation is for you. So um, thank you again, my friend. It was beautiful meeting you. I will definitely have you back. Friends, have a great weekend and um, go subscribe to my YouTube if you're not already because this is where all these amazing conversations are kept. Uh, I love you and I'll see you next time. Cheers, you guys. Bye.